Hey, what's up you guys? It's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, welcome to my channel. So today I thought I would do a unsolved mystery case because these types of videos always fascinate me. They're my favorite videos to watch on YouTube. So I thought I would do one myself. So the case I'm going to be doing today is on Sneha and Philip. And what's really interesting about this case is it is so mind-blowing and it's just so bizarre and i couldn't find any videos about it on youtube i think i found one and besides that there's nothing and you know it's just it's sad because a lot of times when there's something that's unsolved you want to get that person's name out there and hopefully you're able to find that person but it just seems like her name hasn't been getting out there so i'm hoping maybe with this video even if a couple people see it it's able to get her name and her story out there so yes so like i said this case is about sneha and philip so a little bit about Sneha, she was born in October 1969 in India to her two parents. She was the middle child, she had an older brother and a younger brother. And when she was younger, it, it's not really specified when, but her parents moved to the New York area and this is where she attended school and it said that she was a very brilliant girl very smart she excelled in all of her classes and that really led her to go off to john hopkins and get a degree and when she finished from john hopkins she went to the chicago school of medicine and now this is where she meets her future husband ron lieberman now ron is a year younger she decides to take a year off so that her and ron can graduate at the same time and in this year she travels italy she has a good time and then she comes back she finishes out college they finish together and then in may of 2000 they end up getting married so shortly after snia and ron get married um they move to battery park which is in a very nice area in new york and it said that they moved into a one bedroom and they were just you know going on about their lives um so they both had to do their internships following graduating and so ron actually did his at jacoby medical center in the bronx and then she sania was formally at and i'm gonna i always forget how to pronounce this name um cabrini medical center in the east village and she was let go of that internship position and i will kind of get into that a little later into the video but then she moved to another internship in saint vincent's which was in staten island so let's talk about the day of her disappearance so Sania was said to have the day off. She had the 10th of September 2001 off and she also had September 11th 2001 off and she was just kind of planning on having some relaxing time, you know, maybe cleaning the apartment, running some errands, you know, whatever you do on your day off. So it said that morning um, she had an arraignment which we will get to that in a minute as well. So she had an arraignment and after this it said that her and Ron went out to lunch or like a brunch type deal. And then Ron went to his shift at the Jacoby Medical Center. So Ron's shift was supposed to be from like 1 to 8 but he ended up having to stay later till 11 p.m. So Shania is just at home relaxing at about 2 p.m. And she's talking to her mom on the chat and they're not really talking about anything um, that stands out. Then around 4, 4.30, she logs off, tells her mom she's going to go run some errands. So CCTV footage shows her leaving her apartment in a brown dress. She goes off to Century 21, which I'd, if you're from America, I was very confused researching this because Century 21 is also a real estate agency and i was reading that she was shopping there and i was thinking why is she shopping at century 21 but it's actually kind of a discount store type deal i've never heard of it and i'm from the us but i i don't know maybe it's still around i don't know but so it said that you know she went there she was buying some bed linens 
um, some lingerie, pantyhose, and she also bought a couple pair of shoes. This accrued to about $500, $550, which she paid for with Ron, her husband's American Express card. So we know that she was at the Century 21 store, not only from the transaction, but she was caught on CCTV footage at the Century 21. So we know she was there. Um, but this would be, unfortunately, the last confirmed sighting of Sunia. So let's fast forward a little bit. Ron comes home from his shift. It was only supposed to be till about 8 p.m., but I can only imagine how hectic it gets in, like, a hospital setting as a doctor, as an intern, you know. So he did not end up making it home until approximately 11 p.m. So when he gets home, he's a little put off because Sunia is not there so it's later said that you know this isn't totally out of character for Sunia so she would do this often you know if Ron was gonna be out late at work um, she would go out to drink with her friends hang out and then sometimes she would sleep over a friend or family member's home so he was just kind of put off by it but he was I mean it wasn't anything totally to the point where he had to start freaking out. Now, this is kind of normal behavior. So he kind of just wrote it off and said, you know, we're going to have to have a talk about this, but I'm going to bed. So Ron wakes up at about 6 a.m. the next day and he realizes, oh, Sunia's still not there. Um, once again, I guess it's not totally out of the ordinary for them. It just kind of seemed like this was the way that their relationship was. She would often do this. So he, he, you know, trying to get a hold of her, he's calling her, really not getting an answer. So then he just kind of left for his shift at 8 a.m. And one thing to note, it is said that the police kind of went through his call records and it showed that he had called his phone. So back in the day, I think you used to call your phone. I'm sorry, I'm showing my age, but I think back in the day you used to call your phone to get to your voicemail. That's how you would check your voicemail. So what had happened was he called his phone to check to see if Snia had called him at 4 a.m. The police noticed this. He claims he just did not even know that he did that. He must have done it in his sleep. You know, once again, it's 4 a.m. I've probably looked at my phone when it's 4 a.m. I've certainly texted people at 4 a.m. when I'm not awake and should not be texting people. So it's kind of just something that might have happened but once again it's not really suspicious so ron arrives to the jacoby medical center to start his shift at 8 a.m um he's going through you know getting ready and everything like that and unfortunately that is when the american airline plane hits the north tower so immediately him and everybody around him is getting ready prepared to have all the injured victims come in and they're all just rushing around you know i can only imagine the panic that's going on in that hospital at that time so like i said ron worked at jacoby medical center in the bronx and unfortunately despite all of their getting ready for all these victims to come in um unfortunately nobody ended up showing up because the city was so congested everybody's running around everybody's checking for their loved ones it's just absolute chaos in that city and unfortunately nobody could get to them in the bronx so you know he's kind of realizing nobody's coming he's calling sunia calling calling you know and she's not answering so he's panicked and he actually takes an ambulance and he gets as far as he can go in the ambulance back to his apartment to see if Sydney is there. And eventually, once again, he's at a standstill because the city is just an absolute... I mean, I don't even know what the word for it would be. Just, just absolute madness. And so when the ambulance has to stop because it can't go any further, he actually grabs a bike. And this bike ride takes him approximately six hours hours to get back to his apartment in battery park so he finally gets to his apartment he was kind of using his medical credentials to get him past all the barriers and everything like that so he gets back to his apartment and the power's out and the way that his apartment was set up is the drawers were electric electric run so you know he can't open the door 
and so he's panicking he doesn't know where his wife is he hasn't seen her and uh, coming up on 24 hours and so finally he's looking like in all the apartment windows and he sees somebody who has a candle lit and he's calling up to them he's calling up to them he's trying to get their attention um, and finally he does get their attention and he kind of explains his situation and just says you know could you go see if my if my wife will answer the door if you can hear anything um, so that person does go to their apartment and then calls back down to him that he wasn't getting an answer he or she was not getting an answer from the apartment and that Snea most likely was not in there so once again Ron is just in absolute panic I mean put yourself in his situation you haven't seen or heard from your wife in 24 hours there was just a, a terrorist attack and I mean this this really did it does not happen in the u.s you know back then this was just uh, unheard of to happen and so now he's he's going through all these traumatic events and he can't go up to see his wife so eventually what happens is he has to stay the night with a friend now keep in mind he's still calling snia i'm not sure if she had a cell phone at the time um, it was early 2000s, so I know some people did not, some people did. It's not very clear, but he, he was leaving voicemails, so I'm not sure if that was on her cell phone or just the home phone in the apartment, but he kept calling and kept calling. So the next day, he goes back to his apartment, and his apartment is just covered in ash, so he had left his apartment window open prior to him leaving uh, for his shift on the 11th at 8 a.m. and it was just covered in ash and the only sign of of movement he saw in the apartment was little footprints from his kittens um, so you know you think if Snia went back to the apartment you'd probably see her footprints or you know she would have shut the door because there's ash blowing in you know what I mean so it's kind of assumed that she did not get back to their apartment what's really peculiar is Sania actually might have been caught on TV footage. Um, there was a woman who was coming up to go up to their apartment at about 8.40 a.m. the day that the Twin Towers hit. And you know, that's just moments before. And you can kind of see her, but you can't really make out the woman because it was in the early morning. And you know how the sun gets so bright and just you can't see anything. That's kind of what was happening on the TV footage. So you can make out that it's a woman figure and Ron says it looks a lot like Sunia's mannerisms, but he can't be for sure because once again, he can't actually see her face. However, it kind of appears that she heard commotion when she was trying to get upstairs and then she actually leaves the building. So a lot of people speculate the Sunia being dedicating her life to medicine and, and really just helping people you know she started hearing the commotions and she ran towards what was going on and i mean it's never confirmed that that was sunia um but you know ron says her mannerisms are very similar and it really looks like something sunia would be wearing and also it kind of looks like her build and everything like that the police actually said for sure it was Sunia, but Ron's not 100% sure and the footage has never been released so we really can't say. So following this, you know, everybody's looking for their loved ones. There's thousands of people missing. There's thousands of people who are deceased and unidentified and people are just wanting to know if they are their loved ones. So Ron goes to the police and reports that Sunia is missing. They're, they're taking notes, they're taking notes, and then all of a sudden he says, yeah, she went missing on September 10th, and then it kind of appears that they wrote him off, or not really wrote him off, but were kind of prioritizing the September 11th victims as opposed to maybe something that happened on September 10th. So Ron's feeling extremely discouraged. Her family and Ron are going around printing thousands of posters, putting them everywhere all over New York. But remember, a lot of people are missing their family members as well. So there's there's just posters 
everywhere of multiple different people just imagine how frantic that time was in that city so it's really putting a standstill on finding Sunia. The family's just so overwhelmed and her brother John actually goes to the media in kind of a, a desperate attempt to get her name out there. Um, he tells a police officer that he was on the phone with Sunia and he heard you know commotion and Sunia was like I can't leave this person they're injured kind of kind of what's the word kind of insinuating that she could have been part of the September 11th attacks and she went into the building to save people or maybe was just even around the building when it collapsed trying to help people get out and I think what they wanted to do was get her name out there and get maybe more of an investigative search going but unfortunately all that did was kind of put it in a police officer's and the news's mind that she was probably a victim of the September 11th attacks as opposed to somebody who would still be alive so it wasn't with urgency that they were searching however it later came out that this was actually a lie so her and her brother john had been on the outs for a couple of weeks and they weren't really talking so um i mean he also i believe admitted that it was a lie but just so you know that that phone call was fabricated so let's get into a little bit about sunia's past because it's just sometimes when these cases happen they focus on the wrong things do you know what i mean so a lot of negative things came out about Sunia. Okay, so remember earlier we discussed that she had moved internships from Cabrini Medical Center to St. Vincent's in Staten Island? Well, Cabrini Medical Center came out with a statement that the reason that she was let go was because of her tardiness and her alcohol use. So after this news came out, you know, her parents kind of fought that and said no, she was sticking up against unfair behavior in the workplace and that she was considered a whistleblower and that's why she was let go. And Cabrini came out, you know, and said no, look, we have no reports that she ever whistled blew any event or anything like that um so no we actually did let her go because of tardiness and her alcohol use so i've seen a lot of people fight against this because a lot of people think that you know she was a woman in the workplace in the early 2000s very early 2000s and she was a minority and it was just a different time back then and maybe they just did not want her in the medical center now you know this is just speculation but it's up to you what you decide to do with this information I just thought I would bring it to your attention because it's something I've seen kind of reoccur in a lot of the articles that I read so she, like I said she was like oh Cabrini and that night she had went out with her friends so you can imagine she's having a bad day she wants to be out with her girls I can relate um, I think a lot of us when we go through hard times we just want to be surrounded by people that we care about and have a good time. So she's out at a bar and kind of a dispute breaks out and she ends up spending the night in jail. So while she's in jail she says that there was some sexual misconduct between her and somebody else and instead of investigating that sexual misconduct the prosecutor actually says no I'm gonna drop that sexual misconduct um claim that you made and now you're getting hit with a false police report so pretty much they were saying that she was lying about the sexual misconduct that somebody had done onto her i don't really know what the evidence behind that was i couldn't find anything but it's not that not, doesn't look too good you know what i mean so i don't know if she ended up coming forward and saying that that was a lie or how they knew that that was a lie that she was filing this inappropriate or false police report but i i don't know because i couldn't find anything i was looking and so remember when i said earlier on the day of her disappearance september 10th prior to her going to lunch with ron her husband she had her arraignment and i actually want to read to you what an arraignment is because i can't use my own words because i actually don't know but it says an arraignment is a court proceeding at which a criminal defendant is formally advised of the charges against him or her and is asked to enter a plea to the charges in many states the court may also decide at arraignment whether the defendant will be released pending trial so after this 
court hearing or her arraignment, it said that her and Ron got into a fight. Now Ron adamantly denies this. He said, no, we were not in a fight. And remember, he also says that they went to lunch that day. So either they might have just gotten a bickering argument or, you know, maybe they got in a little fight and they made up and they went to lunch. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's hard to say because a lot of people communicate differently. So what's an argument for some people might not be an argument for other people. So it's possible that they may have just got this information wrong. It appeared to be an argument, but you know, it wasn't. So that's just a little bit about her legal history because it gets brought up a lot, which I mean, you can bring it up because it, it might help the case, but also at the same time, I, I feel like you're trying to paint her as this certain thing. I don't know. That's just my personal take. Also, another thing going in along with the drinking, um, it was actually said that she frequented lesbian bars. So let's get into that because that's something that's highly talked about. When she filed this sexual misconduct against another member, it was at a a normal bar not a lesbian bar it was just she was at a normal bar so her family kind of said you know she wasn't feeling safe at those types of bars anymore anything uh where there were usually men around and things like that she kind of wanted to avoid so she started attending lesbian bars now when people found out that she was attending these lesbian bars i mean the assumptions started flying she's bisexual her sexuality was repressed as a young girl now she's letting go she's having an affair um she's cheating on ron with a woman um also a lot of sources say that when she was at that century 21 where she brought the lingerie and the bed linens that was all things for an affair there's no there's no evidence that i could find that she cold hard evidence that she was having an affair with a woman or at all honestly um but the media tends to like to run with this a lot uh painting her out that you know she she was having marriage problems with ron and that's why she was going to these lesbian bars i personally could not find any evidence that that was true but i just thought it was worth bringing it up because a lot of people say that that's kind of what was having a strain on their relationship which could lead to one of the theories of her disappearance now let's get into the theories so there's three main theories that i see a lot and i would definitely say the number one main theory is that she perished in the 9 11 attacks as we previously talked about there was a woman seen trying to get up to the elevator to her apartment just moments before the 9-11 attacks she might have heard commotion and then ran out keep in mind Sania had dedicated her life to medicine and helping people and saving lives so is it so far-fetched that she would give up her life to try to save those in need at the time so some closure for the family is that she was pronounced dead on september 11 2001 due to you know three years passing by and there was no sign of sinia and there was many unidentified bodies who passed away unfortunately in the in the 2001 attack and many families are left without closure but um just really sad so her family fought so hard to get her on the september 11th victims list um, she was originally on it and then they took her off of it because there wasn't sufficient evidence that she had perished in the 9-11 attack and then they they put her back on it the second theory is that you know she wasn't happy with ron and once again she had repressed her sexuality and she was going to these lesbian clubs and bars and eventually she had met somebody and she ran away and used the attack to kind of cover it up and to kind of make it seem like she had perished in the attack when in reality she was somewhere else. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts about that theory in the comment section down below. I'll kind of leave it up to you guys. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think that they tried to skew it a lot when she started visiting these lesbian bars that she was bisexual and she just had but we really don't have any proof of that so that's just all i'm saying so the last theory is that she actually was murdered prior to the september 11th attacks and due to everything going on you know the chaos the absolute turmoil that those attacks brought it was just kind of swept i don't want to say swept under the rug but there was just so much on the police department's plate maybe the correct research wasn't done or the time given wasn't how the time that would have been given if it wasn't happening during september 11th if that makes any sense so let's say it was like june 5th of that year 
probably would have, her case would have probably gotten a lot more attention than it would have versus September 11th when all these people are missing. Um, there's unidentified bodies. Everybody's family members are looking for them. It's just, it just, it all got so tangled and just chaotic is really just the word for it. And I don't know, it would just be a very, very bad coincidence if that's what happened if she was victim of a crime that left left her dead and it was just kind of swept over by the 2001 attack so that is the case of sunia and philip let me know if you guys have ever heard of this case before because i personally just saw it in one little clip prior to making this video i just try to get as much information as i can although a lot is still unknown I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like I said if you guys ever want to put in any suggestions just let me know. I'm really happy to be back. I'm sorry I took such a long break but I hope you guys are having a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will talk to you later. Bye guys.